Thank you, Jesus. You know, there is joy in the new life. And that's what the enemy wants to steal, is the joy, you know. He steals, tries to attempt to steal your identity, but the joy of new life. You know, when I, when I first came to the Lord, to me, I was the most wealthiest man in the world. <laughs> I, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. <laughs> but to know him was the greatest riches of anything and everything. To know his voice, to know his leading, to know his presence. And to know that you can have fellowship with the one that not only created you, but created everything that holds life and death in his hand. That holds the beginning and the end in his hand. The joy of the new life. And so many people take it for granted. They become compromised in the joy of the new life. The enemy likes to bring a knock on their back doors and say, hey, do you remember when? And focus, refocus back into the past instead of the future. And tells us all about our wrongs and faults and everything we should have done and how we should have done it. Then we begin to look at ourselves. Hello? Then what begins to happen is oppression comes. Heaviness comes. Sorrow comes. Regret comes. You know? Everybody has some sort of a regret in their life. But we can't allow regret to bring us to oppression. Amen? We can't allow regret to, to, to cause us to lose our joy. Because jo the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? And when you carry the joy of God, other people know it. Because your countenance is different. When you're miserable, don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Please. Go home, get in your closet until you change. Amen. Don't run to the phone, run to the throne. The phone ain't going to rescue you. <laughs> Unless the Lord tells you to call someone for prayer. But we must maintain the joy of this new life that God has given us. And maintain an attitude of gratitude. Amen. Turn to Romans 14. Romans 14 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak this together. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet, if your brother is grieved because of your food, you no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Let me edify this a minute here. It's not eating and drinking. Amen? It is not eating and drinking. This is not the kingdom of God. That's the flesh. Amen. That's the kernel part, the eating and drinking. He said the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Amen. So where do you see that? But what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I love it. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. 
But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not of faith is what? Is sin. So we have what is the kingdom of God? It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom. In the what? Holy Spirit. In the what? Holy Spirit. It's not eating and drinking. Eating and drinking is in the flesh. Amen? Righteousness, peace, and joy is in the spirit. Some people are more concerned of what they got to eat, what it's got to taste like, and all kinds of other stuff. Compa Look, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with eating something good. Amen? But sometimes it's more of an idol. People stumble over themselves in food, in eating, in drinking, and so forth. I mean, look at how many people, you are what you eat, amen? We've talked about this already. Look at how many people are sick and ill because of the things they eat. You know what begins to happen is they begin to lose their joy. See, the more you feed your flesh, the more you starve your spirit. Amen? And Galatians chapter 5. The joy, joy of new life. Let's maintain the joy of new life. Amen? Galatians 5. You know, in such a time when seasons and holidays and stuff like that come around, people get really goofy. They get oppressed. They go in debt. All kinds of things begin to happen during the holidays, especially Christmas and, you know. You know, they're celebrating more presents and gifts than they are the reason for the season. Galatians 5.22. Let's speak it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So we see there is the, in the Spirit, in the kingdom of God, in the Holy Ghost is righteousness, peace, and joy. In the fruits of the Spirit, there's love, joy, and peace. Amen. Now, I look at joy, J-O-Y. Amen. In the area because your number one enemy is you. Does everybody get it? Your old man is your number one enemy. Your flesh, yourself. Now, there is a new life. Amen. So, I look at joy... Because your old man is always coming at you no matter what. I look at joy as jumping over yourself. Does everybody get it? So when your old man is shaking, you know, jump over it. That's called joy. Jumping over yourself. Hello. So in this, you're jumping over. You are Jumping over yourself, you're avoiding the voice of torment, sorrow, and oppression. Amen? You ain't got to take it. Just jump over it. Acts chapter 10. Jump. Yourself. Joy. <laughs> Next time you see somebody that's miserable, tell them, Oh, man, you need to just jump over yourself. Acts 10. In verse 37. Oh, snap. Acts 10, 37. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's speak it together. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed 
by the devil, for God was what? With him. Okay, so we talked about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then we talked about the fruits of the Spirit being in love and joy again. Amen. Now we talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit with power that overcomes the devil of oppression. Because what steals your joy? The devil. Amen. Oppression. Never look at what you don't have. Be grateful of what you have. When you begin to compare up with your other people what you don't have, oh man, how come they have it and I don't? Because you ain't earned it yet, homie. When God says you can have it, you can have it. Amen? That's the way it is. He knows when you can have it, and he knows what you need. Well, I've been praying this for, for 20 years. Well, you've probably been praying the wrong thing. Selfish flesh creature. Hello? See, we want God to have the last word in everything. Lord, what do you think is best for me? I'm, and that's how we have to talk. That's how we are with him. He knows what's best. Daddy knows best. Amen? So we have, again, in the Holy Spirit, righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen? You got the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. And then you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit with power. To overcome the devil of oppression. Amen. Remember, joy is jumping over yourself. Psalm 16. Man, we should be at joy all the time. If you're not going to be at joy, make sure you don't say nothing. Until joy is restored. And the Bible says joy comes in the morning. Amen? If you repent, <laughs> turn away, walk away. Psalm 16.10. Uh, let's start at 9. Therefore my what? My heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in torment. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life and in your presence is what? So we see where is the fullness of joy? In God's presence. So when people are miserable, what are they lacking? God's presence. I mean, it's, it's a common sense thing. Amen. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. He says, you will not leave our soul in torment. In your presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures. Many are, <laughs> many are more focused on their afflictions and the afflictor right, than the promises of God. I'm going to say that again. Many are, are more focused on their affliction and their afflictor than the promises of God. If they be more focused on the promises of God, many people be healed and freed. But they're more focused on the tormenting voices. They're more focused on how they feel. They're more focused. That means they're more focused on themselves. The more you are focused on you, the worse you are. Somebody get it? The less you are focused on you, you decrease and he increases. Amen? Psalm 34. Verse 19. You know, one of the things of keeping the joy, again, maintaining God's presence and, you know, feeding your spirit and starving your flesh. Amen. One of the things we want to be able to be able to do is, is to discern our limitations. There are things, there's a level where you will get to where you will lose your joy. Amen? In frustration and so forth. We must be sensitive to those areas and discerning. 
I know that there's a place of, that where I get to where it's either I'm going to stop what I'm doing and back up and wait, amen, or I'm going to throw out what I'm doing and say that it's done. I'm done. I'm going to maintain my joy. Does everybody understand that? Now, if it's something else and you have to hire someone to do it, then you just do it. I mean, there's times when I don't care, but I'm not going to allow the enemy to steal my joy, no matter what. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, amen, but there's an area and a time where it's like, you know what, the limit is done. If I go any further, I'm going to lose my joy if I kill somebody, you know. And, and, and so in that limitation, we must discern because we don't want to grieve the Spirit, amen. We want to stay in the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And we will stay in that joy, and we will jump over ourselves, Amen? And then when you jump over yourself, you turn around, and you kick it right in the butt, slap it in the head, knock it out. Hallelujah. Verse 19, are we there yet? Let's speak it. Many are the afflictions of the what? Righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of a few. Oh, all of them. Okay, praise God. He guards all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be what? Condemned. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers those that know his promises. I'm going to say it again, that know his promises. Again, many people are more focused on their afflictions Instead of the promises of God. And their afflictor. Instead of the promises of God. <clears throat> Many are afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers those that know his promises. You know there are open doors of thought agreement. Tongue agreement. Or emotional agreement. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Thought agreement. Tongue agreement. And emotional agreement. Those will open the doors to oppression. And the enemy will have access to steal your joy. You may not know it. Amen. Sometimes you don't realize it yourself. But then everybody else will notice it. James chapter 1. Your attitude will show it. And your desires will definitely show it. Your tongue will really expose it. <laughs> joy, joy, and joy. James chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it, please. My brother counted all joy when you fall into various trials or tribulations or challenges, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let the patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Here's when the challenges come. Well, we're to consider it joy. Okay, praise God. Whatever it is, you might have done, made a mistake. You may have gotten an accident. You may have not paid a bill on time, you know. Something might have happened, you know, that you made a mistake. Amen. That's why it's, they're accidents. They're mis, you know, you, you might have forgot something, whatever it is. Or well, something in the innocent. Amen. But in that, we've got to count it joy. Why? We count it joy because we know all things are going to work to the good no matter what. If you really have a relationship with the Lord, it's going to work to the good. And that's what he's saying right here. Look at Count it all joy. Why? Knowing that the testing of your patience, uh, your testing of your faith produces patience. And let it have its perfect work. In other words, don't run. Amen. Don't make excuses. Admit it. And follow through with it. Let it work for you. Amen. Because you know what? We, how do we learn? Suffering. Suffering challenges train us. Every one of us has gone through stuff. Thank God we go through it. Just don't get stuck there. Amen? Hallelujah. So he says, listen, let patience have its perfect work that you may perfect, be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. 
Count it all joy in the testing trials of advancement. Amen? The challenge that promotes or demotes will set you free or you will repeat until you see and understand. It will constantly repeat itself until you get the understanding and you are able to see what's happening. Because you'll be prepared. Again, you must set, God wants to set us free from these things. Either you'll be free or you'll repeat until you see and understand your challenge to pursue accordingly. If you begin to grumble and complain during your challenges, you will repeat. Because now you're not allowing it to work for you. You're working against it. Amen? Does anybody get it? Because grumbling and complaining ain't joy. That's flesh. So if you find yourself grumbling and complaining in the circumstances, amen, you know that you're working against it and it's not working for you. And you will repeat Philippians 4. That means we must maintain our joy. Philippians 4. In verse 4. Philippians 4, 4. It says, rejoice. Now, that word rejoice means to rejoice. Amen? Does everybody get it? So if you've joiced once, you've got to joice again. It means be rejoiced again. Redo it again. Get connected. Amen? Everyone say rejoice means rejoice. There it is. Rejoice when you feel like it. No. Rejoice in the Lord always. So you have an attitude of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's a part of rejoicing. Thank you. Worship and praise is, we rejoice when we worship and praise. Amen? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Well, there's a reason for that. It's rejoy. Amen? Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for everything. Nothing. Nothing. Why? Anxiousness is fear. And it steals it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Very powerful. Rejoice in the Lord always. Receive your joy from the Lord's presence always. 2 Corinthians 4. When you sense that, that limitation where anxiousness comes, fear comes, anxiety comes, stress comes, stop. Stop. Because if you go forward, you're going to lose your joy. Amen? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Let's speak it together. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So we're to stand fast, hold on. For our temporary affliction is working for us. Only if you allow it to work. Amen? Only if you allow it to work. We must refocus. Re what? Refocus, rejoice, and reconnect. I'm going to say it again. 
we must refocus, rejoice, and reconnect from the temporary challenges, the burdens and trials and tests and attacks to the presence and the eternal presence of joy in the Lord. We must refocus. We must reconnect. That's up to us to do that. And what are we doing? We're going to refocus, we're going to rejoice, and we're going to reconnect to the eternal presence of joy in the Lord, which brings strength to overcome. Amen? To overcome everything. Remember, you're jumping over yourself. Amen? Matthew 11. If you find yourself doing a lot of butt button, you know, but, 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 you're trying to make excuses. But this, but that, but, 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 and but. You, you're, the enemy's trying to refocus you away from what's happening or the truth. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Remember, we're not the butt ministry, amen? We're the head, not the tail. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Let's speak it together. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and what? And learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The yoke is a reputation. In other words, you're yoking one... Uh, tying to each other. But the yoke in this is God's anointing. It's his what? His anointing. This is what it is. He said, yoke yourself to my anointing and learn from me. Does everybody understand that? What does the word say? It says that the anointing is the one that teaches us. We want to be taught by the anointing, not by human concepts and precepts, but by eternal ones. The anointing is what teaches us. If we will learn through the anointing of Christ, we will always be free. We will always have joy. Amen? You won't look back. You'll always look forward. And you'll know everything's going to work to the good no matter what you've done or what comes across your path or what test or challenge. We're to come to him for rest and peace and take his anointing and learn from the anointing. Why? Because then it's easy and it's burdenless. You many people put on their own burdens. I mean, again, we're our worst enemy. You know, and we, we, we can destroy ourselves with our own words. John 15. You know... It's supposed to be a season of joy. Do not go to the mall. It's not joy. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> John 15, verse 9. Let's speak it. As a father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that to lay down one's life for a friend. If you are my friends, if you are what? If you are my friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I what? Command you to. Anybody want to be a friend of the Lord? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> no longer do I call you servant, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. 
If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they, if they, if they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Powerful. And what was his purpose? He was saying, man, look at I'm, my, my prayer is that my joy stays with you no matter what you go through. Amen. It's not, see, the world does not know joy. They know happiness and gladness, but true joy only comes from the presence of God. We might think we were joyful out there, but we really were not joyful. True joy comes from the presence of God. And you don't need to purchase anything. Amen. You don't need to go out and complete something to have joy. You just need to get in God's presence and you have joy. It's free. He paid the price for us. Amen. Praise God. John 17. And because the world doesn't know the Lord, they have to buy their happiness. John 17, verse 9. Jesus said, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours, and all yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world, I also send them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Very powerful. Again, he prayed again that my joy, he said, would be fulfilled in them. Jesus prays for our joy. Amen? The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to steal your identity, doesn't he? Listen, again, the world is absent from the joy of God's presence. It must be brought in. And we bring the joy of God's presence in by praise and worship. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. Keep your joy. In verse 22, Proverbs 17, 22. And let's speak it. Is everybody there? All right. A merry heart 
does good. That's like a joyful heart. A merry heart does good. Like what? Medicine. But a broken spirit dries the bones. They've physically, statistically, and everything out, a person that has a joyful heart, merry heart, heals quicker. When a person's miserable. But look at how, how many people have been sick with all kinds of stuff, and even the medical field tries to oppress them. You know, it's not very joyful in the hospital. Although when we go in the hospital, we bring joy. Amen. And so in that, you stay in the joy of the Lord, man. You stay healthier. You stay youthful. The joy of the Lord is good medicine for you. And I'm going to close at John 10. So know your limitation. Remember that song, stop in the name of love before I cast you out. Amen. <laughs> Who was that by the temptations? No. Uh, the Supremes. That was it. Stop in the name of love before I cast you out. Think it over. <laughs> Some of you guys might not know that song. It's okay, though. Ooh. Ugh. John 10 and verse 10 and verse 9. Let's speak. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. It does not say pastor. Amen? The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Yes. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, he is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep. Sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling. Does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them I also <clears throat> must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received from my Father. So listen, there should be joy of this new life, and we should maintain the joy of this new life. Stop looking at your old life, what you used to do, how you used to do it. It doesn't matter. Old is gone. Amen? It's done and over with. We must come to the end of ourself and the old. Because you can't get anything new until the old is over. If you're still carrying old and the new, it won't, it won't mix. It's a mixed anointing. Amen? You'll have problems. You'll struggle. We must maintain the joy of this new life. Many people are still trying to find joy. And they're finding it in the wrong places. It's not in a bottle. It's not in a joint. It's not in drugs, it's not in alcohol, it's not in sex. It's in God's presence. It's not in wealth, it's in God's presence. That's it. The joy comes from God's presence. And worship brings us into his presence where we can receive joy. Don't let the enemy steal it. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal this word of revelation to each and every one of us that we may be reminded of this wonderful new life and everything that you've done for us and walk in joy with a merry and joyful heart and be grateful in everything for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug. Tell them you got it.